do your events of Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products, well check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and stock all the major brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. You're also able to get yourself a free copy of Middle Earth Shadow of War when purchasing any NVIDIA GTX 1080, 1080 Ti graphics cards or selected laptops or systems. So check out the link in your video description to go visit Rebel Tech and get yourself a free game. What's up everybody, welcome to We Do Tech. Now this last year has been quite a rollercoaster ride for the CPU market. First AMD released their Ryzen CPUs that after a long time could compete to Intel for pricing and performance. After that Intel released their KB Lake X processors which was quite a surprise to most of us. And then only a few months later now Intel is releasing their new 8th generation Coffee Lake processors. Now for a long time Intel has mostly stuck to just 2 cores 4 threads for an i3 CPU, 4 cores 4 threads for an i5 and then 4 cores and 8 threads for an i7. But now it's time for a change with the new 8th generation processors. You will get a i3 with 4 cores 4 threads, an i5 with 6 cores and 6 threads and then i7 with 6 cores and 12 threads. This is mostly due to AMD's Ryzen processors featuring more cores but sacrificing on speed. But this is where Intel is not going to sacrifice. You will still have a higher core clock and they have just added a bit more cores for more power. So Asus of Africa has graciously enough lent me one of their new Z370E Strix motherboards and one of their samples of an i5-8600K for a day, even though they needed it urgently for something else. So a big thanks to them for making this video possible. If you are going to get the new Intel 8th generation processor for yourself, you can pair it up with the ASUS Z370E Strix motherboard like I had that features awesome RGB lighting that you can sync with all your ASUS and Aura enabled devices. It has built in AC, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, a cool M.2 heatsink and it also features quick and easy overclocking with Fan Expert 4. So go check out some of the other 8th generation boards that I have to fit your preference and budget. Now overclocking the 8600K was a breeze with the Z370 Strix board. I was able to get a stable overclock of 5.2 GHz on all 6 cores at a 1.325 voltage. Now because I was pressed for time I could not play around with lowering the voltages or even test how high I could get a single core clock but I was impressed to see that the 8600K was able to hit 5.2 GHz on all 6 cores. The base clock is only 3.6 GHz but with Turbo Boost I usually saw it at a 4.3 GHz range. So you can get a lot more juice out of it with just an overclock. Also, temps was not too bad with my Corsair H100i V2 running in the 8600K at 5.6 GHz on all 6 cores, again at 1.325 voltage. The CPU ranged from 35 degrees on idle to 82 degrees on max, but usually I saw it at the 70 degree range when doing my benchmarks. Now for my benchmarking I was only able to test the i5-8600K to my Ryzen 1800X because that's all other CPUs I really had to compare it with. I also only had 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB memory running at 3000 megahertz and a GTX 1066 gig Strix card. So for my gaming benchmarks the 1060 was a bit of a limiting factor but for the other benchmarks it didn't really make a difference. So with that let's quickly jump into those benchmarks.
as you guys can see, for gaming, the 8600K beat the 1800X in almost every gaming benchmark and application that favors a higher core clock. Only in some games did the 1800X score a close win, and in Cinebench did the 16 threads really make a difference, scoring 1623 over 1184. Now, I would have liked to be able to test a few other real-world benchmarks as well, but the limited time and having some power issues, I didn't really get a chance to test everything. But from my test, I can already see that the 8600K is going to be an awesome mid-range CPU, not only for gaming, but for production work as well. The extra two cores and threads are going to make this a great CPU for gamers, video editors, and 3D designers. And even not having the i7 8700K to test myself, I think if you are able to get the same overclock or even a bit higher than the 8600K, the i7 will beat the Ryzen 1800X. Having a bit fewer cores and threads, but having a much higher core clock, which in turn will close the gap and make that the best consumer grade CPU for gaming and any other production work as well. But now, not forgetting about the i3 8350K, which is an overclockable i3 with four cores and four threads. Depending on the price, this or just a non-K 4-core version might become the new budget gaming CPU with a base clock of 4 GHz and an overclock probably getting you well past 5 GHz. But all of this is just my theory and we'll have to wait and see what all the other reviewers get with their CPUs. But anyway, that's pretty much it for my review on the 8600X. Now, I would have liked to review it with some other processors as well, but we couldn't get our hands on any other 8 generation processors and I didn't have any other processors really lying around to compare it with the 8600K and I also really didn't have a lot of time with only about only about 24 hours and also having a lot of power issues. So I'm actually pretty excited to see how the other CPUs perform with the i3 8350K and also the 8700K. I really want to see if it actually performs better than the 1800X like I think it will with a higher core clock but just two fewer cores and a bit fewer threads. So I'm pretty sure it will beat the 1800X but we'll have to see. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always and I will check you guys next time. Cheers guys.